Hey everyone, welcome back to Decode by Upgrad Campus, an explainer series where we unravel complex topics in the higher education sector to help you understand them better. Do you remember your GPA in your undergraduation? Okay, your best grade in first semester. Do you remember the credits you earned in that subject? That's getting a little tricky, but don't worry. We'll decipher a similar conversation today. As you must have guessed from the thumbnail by now, we'll be talking about the National Credit Framework, also known as NCRF. The NCRF is a system that aims to standardize the way academic credit points are awarded and recognized in India. And its implementation has the potential to make higher education more flexible, transparent and accessible to students across the country. For your convenience, we've included timelines in the video that enable you to navigate to specific areas that pique your interest quickly. Education serves mainly two purposes, unlocking human potential and driving the economic development of a country. We have a significant advantage as one of the world's youngest nations with more than 62% of our population aged between 15 and 59 years and around 54% below the age of 25. However, to leverage this demographic dividend, it is crucial that we equip the upcoming workforce with knowledge and skills that will contribute to the country's economic growth. Talking about skills, the National Education Policy 2020 emphasizes that skill training needs to be considered a complementary and essential part of mainstream education, rather than being regarded just as an additional deliverable. The policy mentioned that the education system must be aligned with the needs of the 21st century economy, where jobs demand a combination of technical and vocational skills. And this is precisely where National Credit Framework comes into the picture playing a vital role in establishing mobility between general and vocational education, encouraging lifelong learning, recognition of prior learning, and continuous professional development. On November 2021, Government of India approved committee formation to develop a national credit accumulation and transfer framework for both vocational and general education, which was chaired by Dr. Nirmaljeet Singh Kalsi, chairperson of the National Council of Vocational Education and Training. The committee had representatives of the Ministry of Education, UGC, AICTE, NCERT, NIOS, CBSC, and Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. The final document of the National Credit Framework was released on April 10, 2023 by the University Grants Commission. Now, what exactly is the National Credit Framework? In layman's terms, NCRF is a meta-framework that covers accreditation, evaluation, skilling, reskilling and upskilling in educational as well as skilling institutions of India. So basically under the new framework, students can earn credits not only from regular academics, but also from extracurriculars like reskilling or upskilling courses. These credits can be saved and used in the future. Now this meta framework consists of three verticals, National School Education Qualification Framework, National Higher Education Qualification Framework, and National Skills Qualification Framework. Under NCRF, the credit allotment is independent of the education streams, subjects or type of learning, and also free from the mode of learning and applies to offline, online, and hybrid modes, which means it promotes extensive use of technology in teaching and learning, especially in vocational education, training, and skilling. Now that we know what NCRF is, let's see how it will operate. The NCRF is all about integration. It's designed to bring together learning from various fields, be it academics, extracurricular activities, vocational skills, internships, as well as experiential learning together. Furthermore, the NCRF divides the learning ecosystem into eight levels, starting from class five and going all the way up to PhD. Credits are assigned to learners based on learning hours. So the more time you spend learning, the more credits you can earn. But what about learning that happens outside of the classroom? The NCRF has got it covered. It evaluates out-of-class learning, including sports and games, yoga, physical activities, performing arts and handicrafts. And to make things get more interesting, the Indian knowledge system has been added to the list of fields eligible to get creditized under the Special Achievers category. If you have to expertise in traditional skills or crafts like handloom and pottery, you'll earn credits for that too. Credits are not simply granted arbitrarily. There is a process to determine eligibility. Specifically, credits are awarded based on predetermined learning outcomes and criteria for special achievements. 
The total number of credit points that a student can earn is calculated by multiplying the total credits earned at a particular level of study or skill with the NCRF level assigned to that level of academic class. We are talking a lot about credits here. Let's see what exactly is a credit according to the NCRF. So credit points are a way that schools measure how much work you have to do in a class. Think of them like points you get for doing different things in a video game. Just like you might get more points for completing a harder level, you'll usually get more credit points for completing a harder class. To put it simply, one credit means that a student has studied for 30 notional hours in a year, which consists of two semesters. What exactly do we mean by notional hours? So the number of hours which is expected that a learner will spend on average to achieve the specified learning outcomes at that level is how we define notional hours. The total notional learning hours for one year of education or learning across school education, higher and vocational education, training and skilling have been agreed to be 1200 hours per year for the purpose of assignment of credits for which the students shall be awarded 40 credits subject to assessment. Thus, 20 credits shall be awarded for a 6-month semester with 600 learning hours. Let me now tell you the three types of credits, academic, vocational and experiential. First, academic credits are earned by completing courses at a college or university. This means that if you take a class in English or math, for example, and successfully complete it, you'll earn academic credits. Second, we have vocational credits that are earned through vocational education or training programs. These types of programs teach specific skills that are needed for certain jobs. And the last one is experiential credits, which are earned through relevant work experience or professional proficiency levels attained. This means that if you have experience working in a certain field or have achieved a certain level of proficiency in a skill, you can earn credits towards your degree. For example, if you have worked as a graphic designer for several years and can demonstrate your skills and may be able to earn experiential credits towards a degree in graphic design. In summary, all types of credits help you progress towards your degree or diploma by recognizing the knowledge and skills you have gained through different education and experience. Now you might be thinking what exactly constitutes a learning hour. NCRF recognizes that learning should not be restricted to instructional hours but should include all activities categorized as curricular, co-curricular and extracurricular. In the true spirit of the NEP 2020 and NCRF, the learning hours that earn credits will be evaluated based on outcomes. This means that students will be evaluated on different activities such as classroom teaching, lab work, projects, exams, tests, quizzes, performing arts, debates, essay writing, self-defense, value education, career counseling sessions, and more. Let us now talk about the various credit levels under NCRF. A credit level refers to the level of education or training a student has completed and for which they have earned credits. To follow the international standards of assigning credits, the NCRF suggests that the highest credit level within this framework should be level 8. For instance, school education is assigned level 0 to level 4. When a student completes class 5, the student is placed at level 1. After completing middle school from class 6 to 8, the student reaches level 2. Completion of high school consists of class 9 and 10 marks to level 3. And completing senior secondary school which is class 11 and 12 corresponds to level 4. So the total credits earned by a student during their entire schooling will be 160 credits. Higher education levels start from level 4.5. A three-year bachelor's degree will have levels 4.5, 5 and 5.5, corresponding to the first year, second and third year. Every year, a student must earn 40 credits to move to the next level. And by the end of a three-year bachelor's degree, the student will have earned 120 credits. Level 6 corresponds to a 4-year bachelor's degree, level 6.5 corresponds to a 2-year master's degree for those with a 3-year bachelor's degree. And level 7 corresponds to a 2-year master's degree for those with a 4-year undergraduate engineering degree. Last but not the least, a PhD is at level 8. When a student completes a PhD, the total earned credits would be 8 into 40 equal to 320. Now, who will be monitoring how many credits a student earns? All the credits earned by a student will be stored in a digital platform called the Academic Bank of Credits or the ABC. 
It allows students and educational institutions to keep track of all the credits earned throughout their lifetime in one place. ABC can store credits earned from any type of learning, including academic, vocational or experiential learning. This way, students can easily access and share the records with any institution they choose to attend or with potential employers. By the way, there is a detailed newsletter that we published on ABC. You can get the link on the comment section. A big benefit of the credit system is that students can enter and leave the educational system whenever they need to, whether they're studying general or vocational subjects. If a student has work experience or training, it will also be considered when calculating their credits. This means that the NCRF makes it possible for students to gather enough credits to go back to mainstream education if they need to. In technical terms, it's known as the multiple exit entry scheme. For example, a fifth grade student who has accumulated 200 credit points can take a bridge course and then appear for the eighth grade examination. If the student passes, they will be considered an eighth grade graduate and can continue with mainstream education from the ninth grade onwards. Similarly, for undergraduate degrees of either three or four years, there are multiple entry and exit options. After completing one year of study, a student can receive a certificate. After two years, they can receive a diploma. After a three-year program, they can receive a bachelor's degree. And for a four-year bachelor's program, they can receive a bachelor's degree with research or an honors degree or engineering certificate. The national credit framework will bring benefits to different sectors of the country. Firstly, let's talk about how the NCRF will benefit students. Previously, universities in India used a choice-based credit system, where a student earned credit by completing a specific degree. But going forward with the introduction of NCRF, a student now has the opportunity to combine a range of courses which allows for interdisciplinary and intradisciplinary education. NCRF will ensure flexibility in the duration of study and courses through multiple entry and exit work options. It will also pave the path for crediting all learning hours, which includes academic, vocational and experiential learning, focusing not only on essential academic excellence, but also on helping students get skilled to be prepared for their future professional careers. Next, let us talk about how the new credit framework will help educational institutions. First and foremost, NCRF will promote more vital collaboration between institutions, making it easier for them to work together on research projects, share resources, and develop new programs. Another exciting aspect is that it will promote digital learning, blended learning, and open distance learning. This means that NCRF will help institutions to leverage their infrastructure to provide students with the best possible learning experience. This will include everything from better facilities and resources to more effective teaching methods and techniques. Now coming to the critical question, in what ways will NCRF benefit the government of India? One of the objectives of NCRF is to help increase student enrollment, which is a crucial step towards fulfilling India's ambition of becoming the skill capital of the world. Through collaboration with the government, NCRF intends to generate more avenues for students to acquire the necessary skills for thriving in a constantly evolving global landscape. Ultimately, this partnership will aid the government in achieving its developmental goals by enhancing the employability of the youth and boosting economic growth in the country. All in all, the NCRF is a first-of-its-kind initiative that promotes comprehensive learning and practical work experiences by removing obstacles, introducing flexibility, and encouraging lifelong learning. NCRF is a game changer that can create a brighter future for students and promote a more skilled workforce in India. Before we end the video, we have a small message for you. We want to let you know about Upgrad Campus and our mission of transforming Indian colleges and universities. Our lecture capture system can upgrade your classrooms to tech-enabled classrooms and our content offerings, joint degree and job-ready certification programs, assist institutions in training their students to be industry-ready and hence boost their placement figures. So if you are interested in transforming your college, check out our website in the description below. We hope you found this detailed video on NCRF helpful. If you like to see more such informative videos on your feed, consider subscribing to us and sharing with your friends. For more information on NEP 2020, you can check out our video exclusively on Decoding NEP, linked in the description below. We'll see you with another video soon. Until then, keep learning and keep growing.